Hi, I'm Oliver Brandmüller from Deutsche Bahn, German Railways. Today I'm going to talk about how we came from an idea for a LoRaWAN powered station clock to a detailed requirement specification for a call for tenders for our IoT module that we completed last year. First of all, I want to give you an overview over the whole process so far. Many of you follow the first phases of the project over the last years and many of you in the recap may have noticed that at first we thought it would be much easier. But we learned one important lesson. Take your time and make a plan. This is just a short catch up for those of you who weren't following us and for all our fellow friends in this project, really short. In the beginning there was a requirement for a station clock with monitoring features, but soon the idea emerged that on the same channel the clock could receive its time synchronization signal. There was a decision for LoRaWAN as it's easy to deploy and secure and with an enterprise LoRaWAN network under our control to bring anywhere we needed it. To bring the project to an industry grade quality, the next steps were consult experts from the IoT and LoRaWAN market for a pre-study. With all the technical knowledge and the financial estimations, we could finally raise money and do the call for tenders. I will go into detail on this now. In the very beginning, we were collecting ideas. This resulted from our changing requirements, but also from exciting projects on hackathons we hosted. It followed a proof of technology and a proof of concept on a few stations with hacked up station clocks that we used to gain experience. Available dev boards and LoRaWAN stacks gave us a chance for a fast realization, but it also showed it's gonna be a long way for a product that will later be out on stations for several years, preferably without any on-site maintenance. To prepare the final development, we let exper internal experts do a pre-study. The goals of this were get a detailed evaluation of the various components. We wanted monitoring, we need to synchronize the clock and we wanted extra functions like integration of our PEX counter project to estimate the number of travelers on our stations. The pre-study helped to sharpen the project goals. Also an important part when working on the railway industry is to identify all relevant standards you have to meet and the tests and certificates that have to be carried out. And there are many of them. The temperatures, vibrations, RF interference with train and station safety systems, just to name a few of them. The basic hard and software architecture had also to be defined. As this is the base for an estimation of costs you will have to do for such a development. Finally, when these steps were carried out and the results of the pre-study were available, it was clear we had to go through call for tenders on a European level to find our development partners. So we were ready for the next phase, preparing the call for tenders by putting all results into a detailed requirement specification. Now to the most interesting part of this year's talk, our preparation for the call of tenders and of course how it went in the end. With all we knew from our proof of concept and the pre-study, we were ready to prepare the call for tenders by putting it all together into a detailed requirement specification. One of the remaining challenges we faced was the fact that IoT is an extremely fast developing technology. The upcoming process would take roughly nine months until the successful beta could even start the development. And our projections showed it would take at least another year to finish the main development. Nearly two years and a fast-paced technology had to be taken care of, so we would still find ourselves with a state-of-the-art product by the end of the uh, when the rollout starts. First, we clearly defined the requirements. We added a lot of details still in this process as we needed to identify must and should criteria and sort out priorities. Also, several of the requirements needed to be broken up into separately formulated statements. All requirements were then checked to match our project goals. Due to the extensive learnings from the pre-study, we had no major changes. That saved a lot of time in getting the documents ready. All functional requirements were clear and the technical requirements had been detailed. Another large topic was to meet the formal requirements. Since our station clocks are working in harsh environments like changing temperatures and humidity, conditions of condensation, vibrations and RF noise from the high voltage systems of the trains, a lot of rules apply to ensure operational safety. Also environmental rules play their role in choosing the actual parts, even coatings have norms to avoid fire and such. 
In the end, the module needs to be certified on several norms and uh, to be allowed to operate on train stations and to ensure it will not interfere with other systems, most notably the clock itself. We also put an eye on non-technical parameters. We develop project plan from our side and set certain timeframes for the development to ensure the partner would be able to deliver the final design in time. We also required potential bidders to deliver project plans from their side and information about how the organization of their work uh, is done to ensure the complex coordination of several involved parties would work over the time of the project. Last but not least, we required the development partners to deliver most of their project under the premise that we will be able to publish lots of the work as open source in the end. This decision, along with others, is mainly taken to ensure the sustainability of the project itself and to put up a good base for future projects where the same challenges could then be much easier handled by reusing this code, not only internally but also externally, that is for example with you. Finally, we also had to consider IT security, of course. So we required software update mechanisms over LoRaWAN and Wi-Fi and the use of secure elements for easy and secure provisioning and code verification. Since the module itself consists of two microcontrollers, it would hold two different firmwares as well as the possibility to update the firmware of the clock controller as a third one, which is not part of this development project but delivered by the clock manufacturer. We went through the resulting documents several times to find and eliminate any inconsistencies and then managed to do so, at least for any major part. Of course, a few glitches remain that, you could, uh, that could be identified and ruled out in the following phase. After publishing our call for tenders, we were surprised by the amount and variety of bidders who applied. We had everything from startup companies to huge enterprises with varying quality of tenders. And we were confronted with a huge amount of questions in the first phase, lots more than we expected, and it took us some time that it was not that we didn't go into detail or left out so many things in our specification. It was actually because we had such a detailed description, so bidders were actually able to have a pretty complete picture of the development. We received several very detailed tenders which showed the expertise of the bidding companies. We could then match every single point to our evaluation metrics to have very objective decision base. The questions we had to answer and the detailed description of the bidders also further helped to sort out the last few inconsistencies and define the last details. The call for tenders was successful for us and we are now in the process of development of the final module and have a clear timeline when the rollout will start in our stations. Thank you and greetings from Berlin, Germany.